Welcome to Excel 2010 Intermediate Functions. I'm Trainer Laurie. What are intermediate functions? Well, functions are pre-built formulas. We've uh, discussed this in a basic class if you don't know anything about them. But today we're going to discuss number, date, text, and some financial functions. Also what the difference between static, dynamic, and volatile are, and nested functions. So we're getting into a little more details on functions. You'll find functions easily on the Formulas tab. Uh, one of the places that you can find it is right on the Formula bar or under the FX key on Insert Function. If you prefer, you can look through a list of functions by clicking any of these little books. Uh, it'll show you a list of functions just in that one area. The first one I want to talk about is rounding because a lot of people get very frustrated with uh, rounding on the uh, using the, the formatting tools. Uh, for example, if I want to round here, 4567.995 rounds up to 4568. But what if I want some more options for it? We have multiple options. The first one is actually the round function. The round function will take whatever happens to be in D D1 and round it to the nearest two decimal places. Okay, so that it took that number and rounded it. Uh, the next one, though, oh, notice that uh, seven rounds up to eight, and that's because anything less than four, four and smaller, will round down by default. It will always round down, uh, but uh, anything five and above always rounds up. But what if I want to change that? What if I want it to be something different? Well, we do have a function called floor, and floor always rounds down. In this case, because it has two arguments, uh, the first one is the location, and the second one says round it to what? And in this case, to the nearest quarter. So it's always going to round it down to the nearest quarter. But what if I want to make some more money, and I always want to round it up? If there's a floor function there, it's got to be a ceiling function, and ceiling function always rounds up. So even if it's a, a 4, or 3, or 1, it will round up. In this case, again, to the nearest quarter. Date functions. Uh, if I want to always show a specific date, I can have three function or three arguments, the year, the month, and the day, and notice it's, it gets progressively smaller. So that's how you can remember uh, which the argument goes in where. So date will always be that date. However, I get more people asking, how can I have the date change? I want it to be the current date. And as many of you know, it is today, equal today, paren, paren. However, the keyboard shortcut, if I don't want to have to type all that in, I simply put in control semicolon, and it will automatically insert today's date. We have another option that's like today, and that is now. And now we'll also insert the time. So you have the option to uh, use control, semi, uh, in this case colon, to uh, keyboard shortcut the, the time, the date with the time. These are both considered volatile functions. So what does volatile mean? Let's look at static versus dynamic and then uh, versus volatile. A static uh, value in a cell means that it doesn't change. For example, 475 in a cell will always be 475. If it's just, if I type in 475, it's static. However, if I put in a formula or a function, then it is dynamic. That means it's subject to change based on whatever value happens to be uh, it it's based on. For example, if I change something in A1, then my formula in this cell, where the, um, the formula is, will change. So that's called dynamic. It's changed based on some other change in the worksheet. Volatile means that it will change whether I do anything or not. I don't have to make one change. It, it will do it automatically. Like today and now, and also rand for random number, it will change no matter what. Uh, therefore, if you try to open a, and close a worksheet that you didn't make any changes to, but it had a volatile function in it, it will still ask if you want to save it. What if I want to find the difference between two dates? For example, E4 and D4 both contain dates, and I want to know how many days are in between those. So I would probably do a simple calculation. Of course, this would be a dynamic calculation. And so it shows that I have 121 days between those two dates. However, if I use my function called network days and say the difference between E4 and D D4, you can see those are my arguments, it only gives me 92 days. So what do you suppose network days pulls out of the formula? Do you see that word in there? <laughs> These are work days only, so it pulls out weekends. And you probably figured that one out. But look at this. If I add a third optional 
argument to this uh, function, I get, only get 88 days. So what do you suppose goes into this third part, this third optional argument? And that is holidays. If I have a little database somewhere of the holidays, and Excel does not know what your holidays are, that's why you have to put it in. This is a very important one that people ask me about all the time. I want to change, uh, in this case, I want to change what's in C3 to uppercase. Or I want to change uh, what's in C4 to lowercase. But this is the most common one. This is what people ask me about the most. And it doesn't matter if this is upper or lowercase here, but I want it to become proper case. That means the first letter capitalized. And so there is a great function called proper. Another great function, with, especially with text, if you have your first name and your last name in two different cells, but you actually want them in one cell, this is a tool that you can use without at even writing the word concatenate. Now, an option is to write concatenate and then using your parentheses, but um, because this is it's such a long word and this is so popular, they actually give us this shorthand uh, and this is actually Greek shorthand. Now, it's called the ampersand, but a lot of people just called it the and. And um, so if I use and or ampersand, I say equal A2, and then concatenated with, and notice what I have in the middle, a space. And that space is surrounded by two double quotes. And that it, it, remember, any text has to be within double quotes. And then I'm going to merge that with the B2. But let's say that I'm going to uh, take this information and put it somewhere else, but it's a formula. That means if I don't take my A and my B column, this is going to become nothing because I won't have any data to merge it with or I'll, I'll be merging wrong data from a different worksheet. So I want to take this and turn it from dynamic, where it will change based on whatever's in here, to static so that it be just becomes Paul Jameson. And to do that, I would copy it and see, it's a formula right now. I copy it, and then when I go to paste it, I right-click and choose my option to paste value. And when I do that, then you can see it becomes just the value Paul Jamison. So that is a good way to change it from dynamic to static so that I can either move it or delete my original data. So what functions are we looking at here? Well, you can see the first one is Roman, and that's going to change that date into a Roman numeral. Unfortunately, there's no function to turn it back into a regular number again. The next one is clean, and if you're pulling information from a, a, a mainframe database, for example, sometimes there are broken characters in there. And if you don't want those broken characters, uh, then you can use the clean function. And notice I use database because I named my range database, and that's a good idea. We talk about that in other classes. Ran between is I want to find a random number between 1 and 27. I just used this recently when I was doing a, a, a raffle, and I had 27 people who'd bought tickets, and I gave them each a number and uh, let the computer determine uh, the randomness. I didn't have to use paper at all. The next one is an info, and there's a whole bunch of info options. But in this case, it will uh, directory will tell you the file path, so you can actually have it in a cell instead of just the footer. But I've had people say, I want not more than just the file path. I want the file path and name. I want the whole thing. And this is a function of cell. There's a, a function called cell, and there's a whole bunch of them. I won't go into them all, but you might want to play with it because this is data directly from uh, the uh, properties of the computer. So that would put in both the file name and the path. Here's some financial functions. DB is declining balance depreciation. For example, if I bought a computer today, what's it worth in five years? How much do I lose on it every year? Future value is a good one. Uh, if you've got money in the bank and you want to know what's it going to be worth in five or ten years based on the interest that you have. Cumulative principal, uh, uh, that's a good one to know. If you're making uh, big payments, you want to know what w is my actual principal on it versus my interest. And there's, of course, one for interest. But the one that I think is very powerful is payment. If you're going to buy something on time, it will give you some flexibility to research uh, what you can afford. The payment function, there are three required arguments. Notice they're uh, bold, and then there's two additional arguments if you want. The first one is the rate, and that is the interest rate. But because my payment that I'm talking about here is going to be paid monthly, and interest is annual, then I must divide that interest rate by 12. So that's one of those little caveats, one of those little bumps in the road that might keep this from working for you. The next one is end 
per, and that means the number of periods. In this case, I'm going to pay monthly, so I would pay over, uh, I'm going to guess 36 months. Let's look at a 36 month loan. If you were paying quarterly and you're only paying one year, then it would be four, and uh, the rate would be divided by four. Do you see? So uh, this happens to be based on months. The PV is the present value, and the present value is what is that loan worth today, and because I don't own it, it's a negative. And if you can put in your own numbers here, you can figure out what is this $25,000 car uh, going to cost me. In this case, $749 and change every month. Could I uh, afford um, more of a car if I paid less in interest? And so why not make it dynamic? So instead of actually putting numbers in, put those numbers into cells and then you sell references in your um, function. In this case, I can change the 48 to 36 and instantly see the difference. Now the final one I want to show you is a nested if, and this is very popular with teachers because I want to know the grade. I've got the points that the student has earned, but I want to know what the letter grade is going to be. So this is what that would look like if you're going to nest for, um, for grades. Now in this case, if B2, if B2 here is greater than or equal to 90, so 90 and above gets an A, then put in an A, and notice the A is in quotes, followed by a comma. But then I move to the second if. Because I don't have an if or else, I want if or or. <laughs> I want another option. And so then I put in my B option, which is B2 greater than or equal to 80. And then show a B. And then because I have a C option as well, then I start another if. Notice for every if, I have an open parentheses. So guess what that means at the end? For every open parentheses, I must have a closed parentheses at the end. So there's my C, and then there's my D, but notice because uh, the last value is F, I don't need an if uh, for the, the last value because that's if it doesn't meet any of these other criteria, then it puts in an F with all those closed parentheses. That's all. See you next time. Bye.